guys, it's Julie Spencer, author of the Bucks and Peak series. We are working our way through Bucks and Peak the early years, and we're starting to chapter 14. Um, just wanted to give you a reminder that if you're liking these videos, I hope that you'll give them a thumbs up and share them on social media. Um, subscribe to my channel and I, um, share them with others so that, um, so that others can enjoy them as well. So, okay, we'll get started. Buxton Peak, The Early Years, Chapter 14, Center Stage. Ian, the reporter called. What made you decide to quit your band and become a preacher? A microphone was shoved in Ian's face as he stepped out the door of the church building and cameras flashed from all directions. Like a true professional, Ian held a calm smile on his face. Please, call me Elder Taylor. Ian pointed to his black and white name tag, which also displayed the name of the church with Jesus Christ in large letters. He casually tucked his hands into the pockets of his slacks and smiled in all directions. He hoped to connect with the whole throng of reporters rather than just the one who had first spoken. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to take a break from my everyday life to teach people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is truly a blessing to be here in Edinburgh. How did your band take the news when you told them you were quitting? Is that why they showed up here last week to demand that you will stop this preaching and come back to the band? Are your band members interviewing new singers to replace you? Cameras flashed and questions flew at Ian from all the, and all the while he nodded and grinned. Silly rumors. Ian held up his hands to halt the questions. Please, one question at a time, please. Elder Taylor, one reporter ask, uh, respectfully asked, could you tell us your side of the story? Thank you, yes. Ian nodded graciously at the young man and held his focus for a remainder of the interview. I have a strong testimony that Jesus Christ is my savior and the happiness of knowing that truth compels me to share the gospel with anyone who will stand still long enough to hear about it. Is it true that you will be serving as a missionary for two years? The young reporter asked. That seems like a long time to be gone from your band. He held his microphone closer to Ian, inviting a response. You seem to know a lot about the church, Ian said. What is your name? Brandon Carlton. Brandon visibly gulped, obviously not used to the interviewee turning the tables. Well, Brother Carlton, yes, I will be away from home for a full two years, and I'm thankful for this opportunity. It brings me a great deal of happiness to see the difference the gospel makes in the lives of the people I've taught this past year. Year? You've been gone for a year? Murmurs abounded through the crowd and reporters and cameramen. Yes, I came here immediately following our North American tour. I was very excited to get started serving once I made the decision. What made you decide to serve a mission? This interview had quickly become a one-on-one -on -one between Brandon and Ian. Well, I pray a lot, and when you pray a lot, God tells you the things you need to hear at precisely the time you need to hear it. Ian scratched his head, contemplating how best to explain this. A peace softened his heart, and his words came swift and sure to his mind. Like right now, that peace you're feeling in your heart is the Holy Spirit testifying to you the truth of the things I'm teaching. It was obvious from Brandon's softened eyes and awed expression that Ian had interpreted the real question. A hint of a smile played on Brandon's face, and the reporter shuffled his feet. Ian continued, When I turned 19, I felt God prompting me to set aside some of the more worldly things in my life and share the truth of the gospel. Is that why you changed some of your lyrics? The light in Brandon's eyes was unmistakable. It was as if the cameras flashing and the chaos surrounding them disappeared. Ian felt as if this was the only reason God had called him on his mission, to teach this one young man named Brandon about the gospel. You have done your research, haven't you? Ian placed his hand on Brandon's shoulder as the reporter's face turned red. Tell me, what changed about my songs? They were cleaner. I remember the teachings in my youth about how our bodies are sacred and should be treated as such. Although it's nearly impossible in today's society to avoid innuendos about casual relationships, Ian said, shaking his head. I don't want to be the one going out of my way to promote inappropriate music. So we changed our lyrics. Is that what your church teaches, that you shouldn't have sex? Oh, I would think not. I wouldn't be alive today if that were true. Ian chuckled along with many others around him. But 
Not before marriage. God has given us the power to create life, and that's sacred. God has promised us great happiness, including having the Holy Spirit in our hearts and having self-respect and self-control when we wait until we're married. I guess that makes sense, Brandon said. I need to continue on to my next appointment, Ian explained, but I'd like to talk with you more about the gospel. Do you have a business card with your contact information? We'll give you a call and set up a time when we can meet again. That would be great. Brandon handed Ian his microphone as he dug through his satchel to find his card. Ian chuckled, holding the professional microphone, and felt a pull towards the stage. Not quite time yet, he thought. Ian felt peace speak to his heart. Brandon handed Ian the card, and Ian returned the microphone. I look forward to meeting with you soon, Brother Carlton, Ian extended his hand. Likewise, Elder Taylor. They nodded, shook hands, and parted ways. Ian and Elder Williams pushed gently through the sea of reporters and climbed into their car. You look different without your glasses, Sister Larson said. I suspected they weren't real. You did? Ian couldn't help grinning. Now that he didn't have to keep his identity a secret, it was easier to fall back into the confident young man he'd been hiding over the past year. Zone conference was different with everyone staring at him. He'd been able to slip under the radar for 13 months, and now he was center stage again. He ignored the whispers and stares and focused on one of the few people who had liked him prior to finding out he was famous. I knew there was something different about you. I can always tell when someone's lying to me. She flipped her long blonde curls over her shoulder and raised her chin. She wasn't the same girl. She wasn't the same shy girl she'd been when Ian first met her. Having been in the mission field for eight months had changed her. She'd grown into a woman. She'd always been beautiful, but this new persona was extremely attractive. Lock your heart, Elder, Ian chastised himself. I wasn't lying. I just wasn't telling the whole truth. The gym where they were mingling before zone conference was filling up with missionaries coming and going, so Ian didn't really feel as if he were alone with Sister Larson. Still, this conversation was quickly straying from appropriate missionary banter. Same thing, Sister Larson raised her eyebrows and pouted her lips. He tried not to stare at them. Thankfully, her missionary companion sauntered up next to her. Hi, Elder Taylor, Sister Stoneman batted her eyelashes at Ian. Really, he thought. She'd never given him the time of day prior to finding out he was the rock star called Ian Taylor instead of the geeky Elder Taylor who wore thick-rimmed glasses and never held his chin high. Ian didn't like when girls flirted with him. He shook his head just slightly, took a deep breath, and rolled his eyes. Sister Larson coughed to hide her laughter. Elder Williams came up beside Ian and leaned his powerful arm on Ian's shoulder. He was a good head taller, and Ian shrugged out from under the weight and craned his neck to get the crooks out. How are we this fine afternoon, sisters? I heard you were missionary companions now, Sister Stoneman said, swishing her hips to the side. That's so cool. Why? Ian and Elder William said at the same time. What was so cool about the mission president shuffling companions? It happened all the time. Sometimes companionship switched up every six weeks. Sometimes every six months. Ian had been told he'd be stuck with Elder Williams until the end of his mission. He didn't mind. Elder, William, Elder Williams was cool, and he always seemed to be there at just the right time to bail him out of situations like this. Plus, he was the only person who had recognized him prior to his mates messing things up. Well, because, I don't know. Sister Stoneman seemed to be stammering and grasping, trying to find something to say. Elder Williams, Sister Larson interrupted. Is it true you recognized Ian, I mean Elder Taylor, the first time you saw him? Heck yeah, I went to see him in concert two years ago in London. He clapped Ian on the back. I've got both his CDs in my car back home. You did? Ian asked. You do? Yeah, I was a little bit starstruck when I first saw you. He raised his eyebrows and pinched Ian's arm. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Ian's face flushed warm and he shuffled his feet. You're embarrassing me, mate. You're just out of practice at being the superstar, Elder Williams nodded and smirked. Yeah, well, I need it that way. Ian stopped all three of them in turn. I need you guys to treat me like any other missionary, just like you always have. 
He stared right at Sister Larson and she smiled softly back at him. She raised her shoulders and sighed, cocking her head to the side. I promise to treat you the same way I always have. Her voice was soft. Thanks. Ian smiled at her and winked. I can't believe I just did that, he thought. He cleared his throat and took a step back. We should probably get this zone conference started. He turned and walked away before he did something really stupid. All right, that is the end of chapter 14, and we will start into chapter 15, which is called Return with Honor, and we'll do that next video. I hope that you are liking these videos so far in the Read to Me series and that you'll give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and share the videos on social media so that others can enjoy them too. All right, see you next time.